Step 4. Repeater Graph States, RGS. This is our fourth uh, link architecture. So let's summarize what we have learned so far. We have considered three link architectures. The first one, MIM, had memories on both sides, and the memories um, emitted photons, which were then traveling towards the BSA in the middle, where we performed entanglement swapping. The second architecture was memory-memory, MM, where one memory was the sender uh, emitting photons, and the photons were traveling to the receiver memory, where we uh, placed the BSA locally. And the third uh, architecture was the memory source memory, MSM, where we placed a source in the middle, generating entangled photon pairs, which were then traveling to memories, which were the receivers with local BSAs. So it looks like quantum memories are, are necessary for link architectures. Is that true? Actually, it turns out no. And to, in this step, we're going to discuss an architecture that doesn't utilize stationary qubits in the form of quantum memories. So let's consider an MIM link. Here we've got a qubit, here we've got another qubit, and they're each entangled with a photon that's traveling towards the BSA. But there's nothing stopping us from exchanging the stationary qubit into a flying qubit, another photon that could be traveling in an opposite direction. What happens at the BSA is still the same. We try to perform entanglement swapping, and if we succeed, then these outer flying qubits become entangled. And this is the main idea behind the repeater graph states architecture. And it works like this. We have a source over here, then a measurement node in the form of BSA here, and then another source over here. And the sources produce entangled photon pairs. The photons are traveling towards the BSA, where we um, attempt a uh, bell state measurement, and if we succeed, then the outflying photons on these sides are entangled. By removing the quantum memories, we're re removing a big source of decoherence. But at the same time, we're also removing a big source of redundancy that was protecting us against photon loss. Now, if we lose a single photon, we're not only breaking the link, we're breaking the entire connection, and we have to start over and over again. So, in order to make this architecture be feasible and practical, we have to somehow introduce this redundancy back, without using quantum memories. And this is where graph states come into play. Graph states are multipartite stabilizer states, and they have a particularly nice visualization. Let's visualize a more traditional graph from uh, mathematics, from graph theory, where these uh, circles represent vertices, and they are connected by edges. In order to prepare a graph state, what we just have to do, we have to place a single qubit at each vertex and prepare it in the plus state, so equal superposition of 0 and 1. And then we entangle these qubits via CZ operations applied to qubits that are connected by an edge. So, for example, over here, over there, over there, and so on. Here are some examples. Let's say that we only have two vertices or two qubits connected by a single edge. So we prepare our qubits, uh, qubit 1 and qubit 2 in the plus states, we apply CZ gate, and what we get is the following superposition. It's a superposition of 0 plus and 1 minus. And you can see that this state is equivalent to a Bell pair. If you apply um, a Hadamard operation on the second qubit, we get the usual 5 plus Bell state. Let's consider another example of four qubits, where we have this star-shaped graph, where qubits 2, 3, and 4 are all connected to the central qubit 1. Now we have three edges, therefore we have to apply three CZ gates on to these four qubits, and what we get is the following state. And again, if you apply Hadamards on qubits 2, 3, and 4, we see that this, is, this turns it into a GHZ state. So how do we transform um, these graph states using Pauli measurements? There are two very simple rules, and again we're going to use this nice visualization of graph states. If we are applying a Pauli Z measurement, that really what we're doing, we're just removing the vertex from the graph, and also removing all the edges to all of, its, all of the vertices' neighbors. For example, in here we've got three qubits. If we measure this qubit in the Z basis, then what we end up with is the following uh, two-qubit graph state. 
for Pauli X measurement. Again, we remove the qubit, but this time we don't break all of the edges to its neighbors, but we create a bridge between the qubits like this. So now let's get back to, our, to the structure of a repeater graph state. Every source must produce the following structure. Here we've got 12 qubits in total. The inner qubits are what's known as a completely connected graph or a complete graph. And each inner qubit has one neighbor and we call this arm qubits. We split the graph state, the repeater graph state into two halves where one half is sent to a measurement node to the right and one half is sent to the measurement node to the left. So the overall structure of a connection is given as this. We have an alternating measurement node, source node, measurement node, source node. So how does it actually work? How do we perform the entanglement swapping and how does the redundancy work? Consider that we have two sources. One source is over here, it produced the RGS, and then another source over here, it also produced an RGS. Now the two halves of the RGS is met at this uh, measurement node, which is not pictured. First, what the measurement node has to do, it must attempt a Bell state measurement at these, at these qubits. And let's say that it fails. Without the RGS, um, as we started talking about at the beginning of this step, we would have broken the entire connection. Here it's not a problem. All we have to do is we have to measure the um, arm qubits neighbors in the Z basis. And then again, we attempt our bell pair at another pair of arm qubits. Again, if we fail, we have to measure their neighbors in the Z basis. Finally, we attempt um, the bell state measurement for the third time, and let's say that we succeed. Now we want to, what we have to do is we have to measure the neighbors in the X basis. And similarly on the other sides of the RGS at the different measurement nodes, to the right and to the left. So what we're doing is the following. Here we are representing what happened to the graph state after the uh, uh, Pauli Z measurements. Really what we create is this bridge of connected qubits that runs all along the connection from one end node to the other end node. And by performing X measurements on these intermediate qubits, given by here, 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 and there, and a Bell state measurement over here, we create an entangled connection between this qubit and that qubit. Here are some features of all photonic repeaters based on uh, repeater graph states. Number one, as we said, there are no memories and this removes a major source of decoherence. Uh, they can be made to be robust against photon loss just by changing the structure of the RGS. Also, it can be made, about, uh, made robust against measurement errors. We have not covered it here for simplicity, but the inner qubits can be encoded and made robust against measurement uh, errors in the Z basis. Finally, the RGS has a very flexible structure. Depending on the link properties, we can either increase or decrease the number of qubits that are part of an RGS, and hence changing its robustness properties. And also a very important property is that uh, these nodes, these measurement nodes, operate autonomously. They don't need any information from its neighbors or from uh, nodes further down the connection. All they have to do is they have to alternate their measurements in the Bell basis and then Pauli basis. Bell basis and according Pauli basis. The requirements for this to work is that we need very efficient sources of these repeater graph states. And we need quite complex measurement nodes, not only in terms of the hardware, but in terms of the software as well. And in the end, we still require classical communication between the end nodes. Depending on the application, it might not matter when this classical communication arrives. For example, in QKD, the photons can be measured out and then classical communication about the Pauli frame can be incorporated into the analysis later. But for some other applications like distributed uh, computation, we might have to wait a little bit in order for this classical signal to re reach the end nodes. That covers our um, uh, link architecture without quantum memories. 
In the next final step, we're going to talk about an architecture that doesn't use flying qubits and only uses stationary qubits.